Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. This is the third part in a series of just a sort of a stream of conscious modeling uh, stream where I'm going for something like this cool stun gun from the game Prey, which I played recently. This was by Yannick G Gombert, and just want to make sure he gets credit. And mine will be not as good and probably a little weird, but that's what I'm going for. So if you just want to like maybe pick up a couple moto modeling tips, then this is for you. So I think I'm going to make this uh, middle sort of part here, this coppery charger today, and uh, maybe we'll get the prongs on too. We'll see. So I'm going to start by hiding this front part and making sort of the back end bracket for the copper coil. Whoops, let me just press in for a new mesh item. Call this, uh, we'll just call it middle part, copper coil, something like that. And I'm going to start with the cube and uh, just, you know, hold a control, dragging it out, kind of that big looks fine. Right click and drag to get some segments maybe 12 and then I'm gonna just one and Z like that and then I'm going to say resize from center and make sure it's um, zeroed on X and Y so just make it a little bit smaller here kind of thin actually and then yeah I'm gonna R for scale I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger actually yeah it's maybe something like this and then I'm gonna rotate it uh, 45 degrees okay I think I'll make it smaller actually I want that top screw to show a little bit something like that um, okay yeah looks good and on the front side here I'm just gonna grab actually on the front I'll do it on the front and back so what I'll do is I'm just gonna grab uh, these hit loop grow it by one let me um, isolate it and then uh, that black is just the shaders recompiling. Like, they really got to fix that in Moto. Anyway, so I'm going to invert my selection and then I'm going to do a radial line. Uh, send it to form and what that'll do is just spherize it. And you can right click and drag and sort of you know determine the radius. Something just like, like that's fine. And then I'm going to bevel both sides out at once. So we're going to both out. Don't really need an inset, just uh, just bevel and then I'm going to bevel inward a little bit like that and then I'm going to drop it and we need to bevel that back piece inward but it's not going to hurt anything and then I'm going to just bevel this front one in get it go down so it's sort of like a sort of a cup shape and then um, yeah something like that and then I'm going to, I'll do some beveling on here. And again, I think I'm just going to use a boolean to punch holes in this. This is going to hold some like support beam type things. So let's just do some simple beveling, I think. So loop that and select the boundary and maybe the boundary of this back one here. And get that just a little bit beveled there. That's probably way too many is probably fine and why don't I bevel the edges of this guy too a little bit like this and then I'm gonna select these loops here it's not really a loop these edges here I'm gonna round um, them out a little bit so so again just with an edge bevel I'm just gonna round those out a little bit like that Looks okay. I suppose I could do the connections as well. So it's just four little double clicks. I do think the select conditional loop feature in Moto will figure its way around that, but um, honestly, I don't know how to set it up. It's a new feature on 16. It just gives you a bunch of arguments for a select loop, but it seems like it's faster just to click these than mess around with that tool maybe more useful in a procedural setting. Yeah, this is, I'm gonna try chamfer here. Again, this is where chamfer and edge bevel will give different settings and sometimes chamfer does better with some of this stuff. In this case, looks kind of the same, but 
That's fine. Looks good. Smooth enough. Um, okay, let's flip this back on. Something like this. And this is going to hold my main copper tube through the middle there. A couple more. Um, rings in here. I'm just going to cheat. Instead of making a cylinder, I'm just going to control shift drag this out and then double click the middle hit P for polygon and then I think I will just extrude it hit extrude if the little tool handles don't appear that you may not have auto activate on you can just the tool pipe is over here and under stats you can just right click and select um, auto activate it should pop up the next time you do it or you can just right click and get your uh, two handles there. So something like this, but it needs to be bigger because we're going to run that copper ring through it. So something along these lines. And then maybe we'll put like a little channel in here. Actually, let's just do Alt-C for edge slice. Alt-C for loop slice. Drag out to two. And then I'll just bevel that out a little bit like this yeah all right a little more detail on that um let me hide the front part again let me just look at it from the front let's see go to uh wireframe so i think what i want to do is just get these two front and back so i want this to be a ring so I'm just going to wireframe so I can scale these to sort of match up with this back part here. And so when I um, delete them and go back to wireframe, or I'm sure uh, advanced, and take a look, it's just sort of uh, this tunnel here is sort of lined up with the cup behind it. And just bridge those two. All right, looking good. Maybe um, just copy and make another one here that we got a couple of those on this side it's looking okay just go in here and make sure I've got a little bit of a gap here so let me just grab this back just one verts middle mouse drag and move all these up just a little bit I want um, some space between the back of this and the back of the front, you know, this part in the back of my cup there. So that looks pretty good. All right. Uh, let me, yeah, turn on the front again. And think about how I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to just copy this part. So W, control shift, drag. I'm going to, I could just mirror it, I suppose, but I'm going to um, just do a 180 instead of a mirror on, on X, so it's facing this way now. And then I think I'm going to take this back part and shrink it down. Let's see if my select closed loop works this time. Okay, closed the wrong side, but it's not bad. <laughs> Better than nothing. So that's shift uh, right bracket, I believe. Okay, so I just have these, and I'm just going to, whoops, I don't want these over here. Press R, drag the planar handle, I'm moving it down, that sort of cup thing we're going to have to fix, but I want it to fit in here. So just Alt-1 to convert to verts, move it, and yeah, it fits all right. Seems okay. Make sure I'm not intersecting anything. And then loop this, Alt-1. Let's bring this back up. Whoops, gotta get everything there, I guess. Okay, yeah, looks good. Okay, then just 
little mouse on those those verts and squish it back down. That's doable, I think. Yeah, I think that's good. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna hide everything and do some booleaning, just to get some holes in here. So there's there's a bunch of boolean tools in Moto. I'm gonna try. Um, the new primitive slice, which I think is okay. I think it actually has some, has a lot of potential, has some major drawbacks too, but I think we can use it for this. So change it to circle and I'm gonna change, um, I'm gonna turn symmetry on and we'll just kind of see what we get here. And we want it, we don't wanna do slice, we wanna do subtract and then see what we get. We've got a hole there, and we just have to get the um, handle there. Okay, good enough. So we got a circle. And so, this, like I said, this tool has a lot of potential, but it's got really awkward controls, and it's really just sort of clumsy to use. It'll be fine for this, um, but yeah, I have a whole video on how to... I'll post in way, ways I think the loops a primitive slice could be better because it could definitely be a lot better. So that radius was, I'm just gonna copy this radius and then I'm gonna hold control and sort of drag it out here and then I'm gonna paste this radius. And so it's the same as the last one and just sort of drag this up here. I also wanna make sure I'm at zero on X. So just something like that. So now we've got our Holes punched in. Turn on everything else. Why does my lighting seem off? Turn on my directional light. Yeah, there we go. Just those shadows I don't like. I'll turn off the uh, shadows. So, okay. So, sorry the lighting was dark. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's kind of getting there. And in the middle of this, we just have a big um, cylinder and that's our copper coil. So for now, I'm just gonna put like a sort of a placeholder cylinder in it. Then we'll come up with some way to get the sort of copper wire look. So just something like this for now, turn off symmetry, just holding control, dragging out at proportional. Over here, we want to go at uh, zero and zero. And like I said, I can just get these lined up a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna right drag, get some segments there. We'll just do 64 like we've been doing everything else. And going to swipe, uh, left click swipe on that radius for X and Y so I can just drag in the viewport. I just want it to fill up my brackets, so to speak, like that. Okay. And I'm just going to give this a copper material for right now, just to sort of distinguish it from the other stuff we're doing here. Maybe I'll give this guy, let's see, give these two brackets the metal material. And let me duplicate my um, metal material into copper and change the color. Control D, dr drag it into copper. And then uh, delete that. You can also right click, copy, and paste material attributes. Just right click and um, copy like that. And for specular color, I'm just going to go to my metals palette and pick copper. Okay, copper coil there. And on his model, he had some gold in there as well, which looks kind of cool. I don't really like them. I'm not sure if I really like them. And I like this layered look, but it's kind of weird. They're just sort of floating in space. <laughs> Maybe I'll deal with them later. I think uh, for now, I shift uh, V for um, mirror and mirror these guys and maybe I'll just do one in this side. Again, there's like this whole asymmetrical aesthetic going on here. We'll make these gold and 
yeah, so you can just like right click and do um, copy and then right click and do paste and it should paste in everything and we'll just change this to gold instead of copper. All right, well, not, okay, interesting. So, all right, let's put our posts in there. So why don't I just select this guy and do a quick hide and we'll get it from the front and maybe turn on uh, symmetry and Y. Do the, again, this would be so nice if we could do symmetry in X and Y at the same time. I'm just holding control to get a uh, proportional cylinder. We'll just drag these guys out. Go right through the post. Is it not going in Y? It is going in Y. Okay, there it is. And I'll just do a little sort of a simple couple loop slices and get this guy all sorted out. So Alt C for uh, loops or uh, yeah, loop slice. And then we just want to make sure you're in symmetry mode and we've got two there. Just right click and drag to get as many as you want. We'll go with two and drag them out. Something like that. You do lose a fair amount of precision with this near the edges. So I'm just going to uh, double click and S for um, slide. And I'm just going to slide in a little bit. Control should technically give you some granular help there, <laughs> like more granular control. But the control and shift uh, sort of granular um, movements weren't implemented very well when we put in uh, uh, Omni Hall, and just it needs to be fixed. Like here, like holding control gives me. Yeah, I think it sort of works. Maybe not. Dude, I just want like minus 1%, minus 0.5%. Okay, great. Okay, all right, let's loop these guys and uh, do a quick bevel. I'm just trying to get like, you know, sort of a bra sort of a bolt type thing on the end here. We'll just do a quick bevel on these. Like so, maybe just finish them up with a couple more bevels. Go in, uh, we don't want to shift at all, just inset, and then uh, shift click, and then now we want to go in a little bit. Okay, looks good. So select them both by double clicking, control C, E for rotate, Alt W for uh, origin. I believe they're on the origin, or they're symmetrical on, on the uh, uh, Y axis. So if I just go in here and say, whoops, not there, um, here and say 90, they should just fit right through there just about perfectly. I think they do. And then uh, Control V, paste those back into the um, X and Y ones. Whoops, did I not select them both? They just Shift V for um, mirror. Let's go to zero, 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 apply. There's our other post, and we're in business. So, okay, that's looking all right. So, for the copper tubing, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Like, you know, it's got this uh, sort of wrap on it. That's obviously a texture, but why don't we do it in geometry just for fun? So, you know, I do have a whole Pixel Fondue video out there. Called, I think it's called Fun with Arrays, where, you know, I wrap like um, a curve, like a tube all the way around a human head, like a piece of spaghetti. And that's one way to do it. But I'm just going to sort of fake it, I think. So I'm going to select my copper here, Control C. I'm going to new, and I'm going to do just a coil. And paste that in there, I, and I and I copied it. I didn't cut it, and so we we'll just have the middle part, not middle part copper coil. So this is the same part that is on this one. I'm just isolating it. Don't need the front or the back. Uh, I'm just going to make it a slight bit bigger. Turn off symmetry, like just a tiny bit bigger, like you know, hundred and one hundred point three percent or so, one hundred point six percent. Whoops, not 106%, but like 
point six or one hundred one is fine. One hundred one, one hundred point five. That's all I need. Just a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna select these. Alt C for loop slice. Um, turn off symmetry. Just go to free. Right click and just get a bunch of them in here, like seventy. Okay, <laughs> or like we'll do sixty four. Nice mathematical number there. All right, so we've got all these edges, and then I'm going to. Um, just do a sort of pattern select here, then go up. Just, I'm just grabbing just some random patterns here. Let's see if I can get it to loop select these, Maybe something like that, that. This chunk, this one, it's fine. Something like this. Oh, come on. Moto, be smarter. You're gonna really make me do this one at a time. Okay. You'll see what I'm doing in one second. So I'm just getting some loops here. I just want a slightly uneven surface. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Not that. There's probably a select random loop script. But this is fine, I think. Okay, so something like this. And then I'm going to go I'm do a, a push. Why don't I do a push? Okay, I'll just do a push. Deform, uh, push. I'm just going to push these out a little bit like this. And then grab a few more loops in here. Just want some unevenness, and I, I, I don't want to just do. You can like do um use like a noise fall off, but I don't want it lumpy. I just want it to look like some parts are going to be wrapped uh, more times than others, or just more overlap. Like you know, just like a little more natural looking coil. And so I'm going to push these as well. Okay, fine. And then I'm going to just select a few of these and Alt L for select ring and L for loop. So now I have a bunch of loops. And I'm going to go to edge and I'm going to convert these to curves. So it should be a edges to curves. I'm going to say spline curves is fine. Create new mesh is fine. OK. So now I've got all these curves here. And don't really need this coil, I'll just leave it there for now. And then I'm going to do a mesh operation for this. Uh, I'm going to do, um, in fact, with coil, I can actually, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to reuse, I'm going to delete all the polygons there. I'm just going to keep this, uh, it's already named coil, so I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to open up mesh operations. I'm going to add a circle, and then I'm going to add a sweep curve, curve sweep. Not um, curve extrude, curve sweep, because curve uh, sweep will take all the curves in one item mesh, um, the mesh item, and not just one. So we're gonna sweep this thing along all of those curves. Uh, we just want a really small though, like we'll try one millimeter to start uh, for, our, for our circle, and our curve sweep is going to use the curve mesh. And yeah, there we go, we kind of see what's going on. And so we could just increase our, our circle to maybe, we just um, actually use channel hall, get that a little bit bigger. And for curve sweep, we're gonna change a couple things here. One, you can right click for steps and drag to the left. Again, right click's always just more of everything more steps, more bevels, more segments, more whatever. We'll just, we'll do 100. Yeah, let's do like 64, then we could sub if we need to. So that's looking pretty good. Are those flipped? They kind of give me the feeling those are flipped. So let's um, flip them here instead of adding a whole new operation. Yeah. And you see what I mean? They're just sort of offset a little bit. So I don't know, it looks more natural. I'm gonna give these the, um, uh, I think I'm just going to, you know, you can't keep this procedural. I'm just gonna, 
I'm just gonna freeze it. So freeze. And it should sort of flatten that out. And then I'm just gonna press M and I'm gonna give this the copper material. And yeah, there we go. Looks pretty good, I think. So let's turn on, there's our little circle. We don't need that. We delete that. And yeah, let's just turn everything back on. And I had kept that copper coil underneath it in the middle part here, but I don't I don't think we need this now. So I'm just gonna delete it. Here's our coil. It it's kind of going through a little bit here, so let's just double click and delete a few on the end. We don't need them in here. Or we can also just press R and shrink them down a little bit just so they're not intersecting. And then maybe over here too, just... Oh, those rings look better now. They look like they actually are just floating in space. So yeah, so let's just uh, just grab these polys here. Open bracket, right bracket to select all connected. R for scale and just scale. Whoops, right, grab the right planer, this one. Scale them down a little bit. So they're not intersecting or just delete them, whatever. Yeah, okay, that looks cool. So yeah, now we've got, now we've got copper. Um, all right, so is that enough for today? Probably enough for today. I, I should call these, I should make these metal, I guess, these posts. I don't really, I don't really like, I should have made these more squarish instead of, um, instead of circles, instead of centrilical, but that's all right. All right, so there's our middle part. We'll add some more detail over here. Now, actually, there needs to be like one more piece over here. This is fine over here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, uh, let me just isolate this and select these polys. And up shift arrow to grow. My selection. Da, 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 da. Like this. W for move. And I'm going to move them this way. Yeah, something like this. I'll, it needs sort of like one more piece of something. And I'm going to select my middle part mesh, this whole thing. And in poly mode, I'm going to add another cylinder just to kind of fill out this section in here. Just need something. So zero, zero. Um, must be bigger than this, though. So I already have this set up an Omni Hall over here, so I can just left click and drag to get the radius. And like I said, I just want it kind of nested in here and filling up some of this backspace. So something like that. Let me grab the front and the back. Shift H to hide. Oops, I can don't have to do that. Let me just hide this uh, back part here, or front part here, I guess. Grab these two. B for bevel. Come in just a little. Another bevel. Like this. Now, I'm going to right click and add another segment in here. And then I'm going to bridge these two pieces, create a ring, and I want this to be bridged. I'm just going to be smart enough to bridge these two. Maybe I'll just delete them. Bridge these sections here. R for redo. 
And then we'll just do that sort of gap thing we've been doing. So double click and double click. And then over here, double click. We're gonna use loops here, double click, double click, double click, and lastly, double click. And oops, not that one. Control. Little mouse drag, we want this one and this one. So does that look right? Yeah. Nope. This one's wrong. There. And then we're just going to do our edge um, edge split. And we'll go 0.015, kind of a big split. Yeah, just something like that, just to give us just something in there, right? So I think if I double click all these guys and Shift H, hide everything else, and then Control, click Boundary. It'll select all those open boundaries. And I can just hit P and get a polygon in there. And maybe I'll just do just a couple bevels. Just like get all these loops here. So, like so. Yeah, okay, I have them everywhere. Oh, C for loop slice. Let's go to two. Yeah, looks good. Alt oh, three to select those polygons. And then do a little bevel. Just to push it. I think it will push in, actually. Just to give a little bit of a... Just a little bit of a... Yeah, just a little bit of visual difference there. And yeah, so unhide, polygon unhide, and then we'll make these um, gold as well. Maybe, we'll see what that looks like. That's okay. It just looks like there's more stuff going on in there. Okay. Fine. Looks cool. Okay, so, yeah, that's where we're at. So, we have got our coil in it. And we need to do the sort of base rail and the handle. And some wires and details. And something with the front part and these front, front prongs. Then we'll be done. Yum, yum!